Hello and welcome to another teaching from 119 Ministries. Our ministry believes that the whole Bible is true and directly applicable to our lives today. If you would like to know more about what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. We hope that you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. In the second letter of Paul to Timothy, Paul warns us about a time when people will no longer endure sound teaching. Instead, they will establish for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I charge you in the presence of God and Messiah Yeshua, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Paul is concerned that these teachers will lead God's people away from listening to the truth. What is the truth that is lost when we establish for ourselves teachers to suit our own passions? To answer that, we have to determine what the Bible declares to be truth. Psalm 119, verse 142. Your righteousness is righteous forever, and your law is true. Are we suggesting that God's people have been led away from the law of God? Yes, we are, amongst other things. Paul knew it was coming, and Jesus, his Hebrew name being Yeshua, also told the disciples it was coming. There are many instances in which Yeshua revealed this. Let's look at one rather profound instance. Recall that Yeshua spoke in parables. Immediately following some of his first parables and because of the prompting of his disciples, Yeshua explained why he spoke and taught in such a way. In Mark chapter 4. And he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside... Everything is in parables, so that they may indeed see, but not perceive, and may indeed hear, but not understand, lest they should turn and be forgiven. So we pray that those that hear this following parable also have ears to hear, to perceive, and to understand. Luke 15. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, She calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Many reading this parable might see the number ten for the ten silver coins and immediately think of the ten tribes of Israel, the northern kingdom that was divorced and is coming back into the kingdom as we near the end. If you have watched our teachings, The Lost Sheep, or What is the Gospel?, then you might understand what we are referring to. At first glance, it might seem to be about the lost northern ten tribes of Israel. However, the parable mentions only one lost coin, not ten. So, perhaps there is a deeper understanding that we should be seeking. Perhaps we need ears to hear. The first subject mentioned is the woman. Most of us know that the body of the Messiah is often referred to as the woman, and Yeshua, our Messiah, is our bridegroom. Matthew 25 is discussed as it relates to the subject of the bridegroom and the bride, painting us a picture of the time when Yeshua returns to claim his bride. However, in that parable, though half were foolish and not ready, and half were wise and were ready, the fact of the matter is is that at one point all became drowsy and fell asleep. Matthew 25 verse 5. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. That means we need to wake up, and because the bridegroom is delayed, and so many of us are still sleeping, and so many are not ready. According to the parable in Luke 15, the woman, the bride, had ten silver coins at one time. How many of us know that the Bible defines things for us? Yeshua spoke in parables to those who knew the Word of God, because the Word of God was the 
key, if you will, to unlock the meaning of words Yeshua selectively picked. What are the ten silver coins? Consider Psalm 12, verse 6. The words of Yahweh are pure words, like silver refined in a furnace on the ground, purified seven times. So here we have silver equating to Yahweh's words. But in the parable, we have ten silver coins, or really, ten words, if you will. Now you may be getting excited because we have heard of the ten words before. We find a mention of the ten words in Deuteronomy chapter 4. And he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, that is, the Ten Commandments, and he wrote them on two tablets of stone. In the footnotes of most Bibles or online Bible resources, one will find a mention of how the word translated here as commandments really means words in Hebrew. The Hebrew word for commandments is not really present here. So, literally speaking, the Ten Commandments are the Ten Words. If we apply Psalm 12, 6, we see that the ten words are like ten silver coins. Now the parable of Luke 15 might be making much more sense. Let's read it again. Or what woman, the bride of the Messiah, having ten silver coins, the ten commandments, if she loses one coin, a commandment, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. So what this parable is saying is that we would lose one of the Ten Commandments. This is exactly in line with what Paul stated in 2 Timothy 4, in which he said people would heap up for themselves teachers that would lead them away from the law of God. This is what Yeshua declared would happen to the woman in Matthew 25, in which he said that all would fall asleep. He did not state that all would stay asleep, but at some point, the whole body of the Messiah would fall victim to falling asleep while he was away, and it would not be until the end when some would be waking up. So, which of the ten coins or ten commandments did we lose? Consider that most people who claim to be Christians or believers Observe nine of these Ten Commandments, but, in fact, ignore the fourth commandment, the fourth coin. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy, as Yahweh your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all of your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to Yahweh your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates, that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and Yahweh your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, Yahweh your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. How many still work on the Sabbath day, which is defined as sundown Friday to sundown Saturday? How many still have others working for them by buying and selling or employing others? To forget the Sabbath, according to Yahweh's own words, is to place ourselves back into the same bondage as when we were in Egypt. All have fallen asleep and all have been led away from the truth, the law of God. How many are going to wake up? Luke 15, 8-10 Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house, and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. When we find that coin, we are to rejoice and let others know. Also, Notice how the finding of the one coin is equated to the woman repenting and coming back to the truth, the whole Word of God. Repentance is the turning back to the law of God, the Torah. And that is how the word repent connects back to the missing silver coin in the parable. Let's read Deuteronomy chapter 4. And he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, that is, the ten, not nine, commandments and he wrote them on two tablets of stone. Do we think that Yahweh would alter his covenant and his words? 
He does not do that. He doesn't alter his covenant. Only men do. Psalm 89. If his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my rules, if they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgressions with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. But I will not remove from him my steadfast love or be false to my faithfulness. I will not violate my covenant or alter the word that went forth from my lips. He said himself that he cannot alter his word. He will not change it. So we cannot suggest that he did. Find the missing silver coin. Repent and rejoice and tell everyone you know. We hope that this teaching has blessed you. And remember, continue to test everything. Shalom. It is because of you, our generous supporters, who make it possible to offer these high-quality teachings completely free of charge. If you feel led to support 119 Ministries so that we can continue this effort, please visit testeverything.net and click on the Support 119 tab. Learn how you can partner with us to take the whole Word of God to the nations.